Hello there, everybody. I'm Mr. GamePie, and welcome back to Let's Play Elibit, Part 7. Today, we're actually going to be leaving the house entirely. And we're going to be exploring a city. Alright, my town captured 5,500 watts of elements from the big streets. Honestly, this area of the game is probably one of my favorites in the entire game. Because we've got this entire little town to explore and run around in, and that's pretty cool, I'd say. There's a lot of really big objects to interact with, just a lot of really cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, you'll be seeing that. So, one of the cool things about this area in general is the fact that there's a lot of really unique powered items. Like, things that you can get power elements from. Including, like, street lights. And you don't really come to this particular area that often. I think that there's only one other level in this section. If there's... A level that I would ever just replay for the sake of replaying a level, it would probably be this one, because usually whenever I replay levels, it's just as, like, trying to get through the game again. But this level, no, it's just, it's one that I would want to actually replay, and I guess that is one thing that the game kind of has going against it, is that, the thing is that there's a lot of, like, optional stuff in the game that would require you to play a level over and over and over again to master it, to understand every facet of the level's composition. And most levels are just not that interesting to do that with. But that's honestly where this particular level actually succeeds. It's really big and really cool. And definitely worth checking out trying to master it. Okay, that was nothing. Definitely need more watts for those. Alright, so we've got a lot of things activating over in this general area. So let's head over here and start getting to work. So we've got this. This action is just a switch that you pull. This is the first time that we've seen one like that, but I assure you it will not be the last time that we see something like that. And now the crosswalk works once again. It's a good thing that everybody has been asleep in their houses this entire time, because otherwise we, may, we might have had a huge accident caused by the fact that, you know, stoplights are working appropriately. That would be pretty bad. If somebody was trying to drive around, it's like, Oh, hey, look, the stoplight is completely messed up. Alright, let's see here. Is that one on? Yeah, that one's on. Let's see if we can figure out the action for this one. Oh, okay, that was... That was weird. There we go. I really like the construction area over here because it's like it's a, it's almost like it's an entirely different level than what the rest of this area has to provide. Because the rest of the area is like you've got cars, you've got shops, you've got uh, like other stuff like that, but then this entire area is just entirely different. It's a construction site. And this is a pretty basic trope in video games, but it's not exactly something you see much in this video game, unless you specifically go over here anyway. And 
there's a lot of power elements to get from these machines. It might be better to come here later, once you've gotten more uh, power for your uh, device here. Since then you'll be able to actually move uh, things around like the giant steel beams. But even without that ability, you can still do quite a bit. Can I get out of here? I think I'm getting out. Yeah, there we go. What the... I can pick this entire thing up. Okay. That is surprising. Oh man, we're just powering all sorts of things up. Nope, can't lift that yet. Can't lift that. Honestly, there have been times whenever I've played this level and I've just stayed in the construction site, like, the entire time. And there's been other times where I've played this level and I didn't enter the construction site at all. And both times, I was able to meet the amount of elements that you need to complete the level. That's just how big and vast this whole level is. And I love it. That said, I think it's about time that we start exploring. Oh, yeah, see? I pretty I was pretty much just exploring this area over here. And I got the amount that I needed. But yeah, I think it's about time that we should explore some of the other sections of this level. Because there's a lot of power elements that we can still grab. And if we do, we can probably get like a ton of extra stuff. Okay. Yeah, I have no idea why that's so light. That's weird. Okay, let's see here. What else do we have over here? There's these. I bet I can open these up. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. One pretty reliable way of getting elements in this level is to take the fire hydrants out of their fire hydrant positions. I've already shown what that looks like, like back at the beginning of the level. But it really is a very useful way to get elements in this particular level. Shaking basically anything that would normally carry objects in it is a pretty good way to get elements. Mailboxes and such. Quick elements for it. Just look at all these power elements that I get from one of these meters, and there's se several of them. So many elements. So little time. This is one level that I would love to have the endless version of. Though, unfortunately, I don't think that I've ever actually uh, found any of the pink mice in this level. But with how big the level is, can you blame me? Far too much to explore in one playthrough. I mean, just look at this. This entire area here has just been one set of power elements after another. I think that one of these was... Yeah, there we go. That was the one that was shaking.
can't pick up the car yet. Here's some phone booths. Even more power elements. There we go. Want to bet that I'll that I'm gonna make it to level five? Bet I'm gonna make it to level five power. Okay. Ooh, I see a blue elevator over there. Green el. Okay, that was that just flew over. Not what I meant to do, but I guess it worked in the end. Uh, let's see here. What is? I think. Yeah, there we go. Just had to spin that thing. Some actions are not as obvious as others. I'm gonna say that right now. There are some things in this game that I still don't really know how to power up. I think there were more power elements over here, yeah. Very close to level 5 power. But look, I mean, I've been hanging out in the middle of the road over there that entire time. There's an entire area back here. I don't think I've ever really explored this part of the level. There's an entire section back here. It's just waiting to be explored. Dang. Looks like somebody crashed. The last time I checked, actually, elements power up cars. So what I was saying about the fact that you would uh, have somebody try crashing in the middle of the road if all the elements went out of commission, that wouldn't be accurate, because the cars wouldn't work in the first place. Might be a reason why we don't see anybody out here in any of these levels. So I do have to wonder, how far away is this from Kai's house? Because we have another outdoor level later on in the game, which is not this one. And it seems to be much closer to his home. So I've just got to wonder, where is this? Like, is it just on a different street than the, than the level that we play later on? I don't get it. All right, but no, seriously, I want to get to level five before the episode is over. Well, the level is over. So, let's see if I can find a few more things to power up my gun. I know there's some more stuff around here. Particularly around this area. Yeah, here's something. Okay, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, that was the thing that gave out the power elements. Okay. All right, level five. I knew I could do it. It's just too late for it to actually matter to any real extent. But look at that. I just picked up a giant truck and it's crashing into me. Okay. Fortunately, that doesn't damage you. Yeah, now, now I can just throw anything that I want. Anything at all. Now, notably, you probably heard a little chime that kept playing, like a Wear! kind of like a messed up version of the elements appear noise. That is saying that something known as a boss black element has appeared. Boss black elements are bigger than normal black elements, they have blue spikes, and they are much faster and more aggressive than the regular ones. They appear whenever you create big messes. Oh boy, this will be something. What the heck? They're all floating. The elements too. Dad, Mom, I'm scared. 
This must be the Elevate's fault as well. I know. I'll go check Dad's secret room. I'm sure I'll find some clues there. I think the entrance was in his study. Somewhere. Alright, so we went from my favorite level in the game, or at least one of my favorite levels in the game, to one of my least favorite parts of the game. And it's kind of sad that it's one of my least favorite parts of the game, because there are some cool things about it. You see, these nice couple levels are going to have low gravity. World without weight. Capture 7,000 watts of elements. And don't mind the floating. So yeah, uh, basically there's anti-gravity now. And this is a pretty cool concept and a pretty cool mechanic in general. You don't really have to worry about gaining power elements anymore because pretty much everything is weightless. Okay, Black Elbit just knocked it all over the place. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Everything is going crazy right now. But uh, yeah, basically the whole me the whole concept of the game so far has always been just grab elements to power up devices that then allow you to power to get more elements because you can carry heavier objects now. But since we can already carry basically any object available in the game, since the gravity is so low, that completely changes the dynam dynamic because we don't need power elements anymore. We can just run around and grab things straight out of the air. There also aren't as many elements hiding under and inside of objects. Which is kind of important because, well, we can't... There's always going to be some sort of restriction on the level. In this case, we can't... We can only break ten objects in the level. That said... I'm pretty sure that uh, this level that introduces something a little bit new... No, it is not. Never mind. Pretty soon within these levels, we're going to be introduced to the idea that... Uh, how do I put this? Whenever you power up a device, not only will uh, power elements come out, but regular elements can potentially come out of them as well. So far, this hasn't been a thing. Every, anytime you activate a device, it's always power elements that come out. And, el and evidently, that's th still the case in this level. But soon enough, that will change. Yeah, see? I just clicked on the refrigerator and I throw it around like crazy. Though that's liable to break an object or two. Alright, so I've gotten a lot of elements in this particular room here. After I check these shelves, I'll probably move on to uh, the living room. Kai said that the uh, answer to his problem currently is likely in his dad's room, but it's going to take him a while to get to his dad's room because he was just in the city in the town, so he's got to go back through the house again, and since he's going back through the house again, may as well pick up all the elements on the way. This particular part of the level is really nice because, well, I really like the living room, and it's a really big space in the living room proper once we get past the dining area. The fact that there's such a high ceiling in the living room area and you can just look all around is just, it makes for a really great effect in this level. Notably, Kai himself is still affected by gravity as normal. There isn't like any jumping or anything that you can do. Yep, that's all power elements. Not even gonna bother. Well, okay, I might bother a little bit. That guy was hiding behind the picture.
Oh, that wasn't the power- I grabbed that yellow thing, thinking that it was a power element, but nope, it's not. This level is also really great because you can often just grab elements from really far away. Getting them at their fullest power. And with that, the level's already clear. This is a really easy level if you just try to grab all the elements that you can. Well, pretty much ignoring all the objects that would normally give you power elements. It's definitely counterintuitive gameplay, especially whenever you've already played so many levels that are completely the opposite. But it's not that difficult. Oh, no, no, you get back here. There we go! Oh, that was a... That was a pink mouse. I kind of like that, but, uh... I have... Oh, there it is! kind of annoying whenever you see shaking objects in this level, because you don't really have the chance to get them, because you can't break objects. I mean, I'm sure that if you shake the object around enough, it will, you know, unleash the element inside. But that tends to be a little bit annoying to do black elements. Where else is... Ah, there's a blue element. It was... That wasn't it. Yep, that was what happened. Okay. I don't really care. Yeah, I think I've gotten just about everything in here. Except maybe, like, elements that are super high up. And yeah, I think that that was a pretty good level. So, you know, the first level of anti-gravity is pretty good. But next time... Next time. Oh boy, next time. The next level, if I recall correctly, is not a very good one at all. Yep, it's that one. But until then, let's look at the story. Is the power really out in the whole city? What's going on here? I wonder when Mom and Dad will come back. Guess I'd better go home. I don't like this. Why are things floating all of a sudden? Even the elements are floating. I don't get it. I bet Dad knows something. Time to head to Dad's room. And indeed, next time we'll be doing that on Elibits Part 8. Until then, I've been Mr. Game Pie. See you next time.